Hello guys and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about uh, something very technical in Fusion, which is edge extension. It's not going to be uh, very exciting, but for sure it's going to be super helpful with your keying. Uh, so let's get started. As you can see, I have this image here, which has a pre-calculated alpha. And as I was saying, we often have to correct the edges when keying. And for that matter, uh, most of the times, edge extension is going to be super helpful. So let's start with the basics and let's go for the blur divide technique. So in order to do that, the first thing that we want to do is to get rid of these in-between values in the alpha. So we want values only to be zero and one. And to do that, the easiest way could be to add a brightness contrast and tweak the values, but I want to do it in a fancier way and that's going to be using a custom tool. Okay, let's pipe in and view the custom tool and move into the channels tab. Into the alpha, we're going to type in a uh, expression that goes like this. If, open brackets, A1 is smaller than 0.5, then the result is going to be zero else is going to be one and this way we have been uh, creating exactly what we need having 0 0.5 as the threshold for this um, uh, one to zero alpha we could actually rig that 0 0.5 using a number in one but for the sake of this tutorial it's not going to make a difference uh, we have to do one more step we have to copy this expression and multiply the channels by that expression so that we pre-multiply this new alpha into the image. All right, so now we can add a blur node and we want to add a channel booleans. In the channel booleans, we want to divide all the channels by the alpha. All right, so now, as you can see, we get this extension as we move the blur size. Okay, so what we can do now is to merge that one on top and with the with some erode and blur on the alpha, we can mix that with our original image and get this pretty nice edge extension. So Fusion gives us another uh, option for that. Let's get rid of this for a moment and let's uh, add a clean plate. So the clean plate node has already built in this uh, tool that we made with the custom tool. So whenever we pipe in something into the garbage mat, what we get is a super hard mat. So now it's inverted, so we have to move into the mask tab and click this invert button here. And as you can see, some uh, of the details have been uh, eaten up by the alpha, but we do have these controls that uh, gives us the ability to bring back some of those details. So what we have to do now is, move, is to move into the plate tab and grow the edges. And as you can see, we have a very similar result as before. Third and uh, last, probably, uh, technique, which is going to be uh, the edge push technique, is going to be like this. Let's add a create bump map, uh, pipe that in, and in the bump map, we want to select the alpha as the height source and we want to crack these up. Let's, let's go for 100. And then what we want to do is to add a displace node. And we want to have the original footage in the background and the create bump map in the foreground. So then we want to move the type into XY 
we want to change the offset for both x and y to minus 0.5 and we want to link the refractions. So now what is going to happen? Let's, let's move closer here. So as I move my refraction, as you can see, something is happening. But we're having some weird artifacts that we can get rid of using the spread here. And as you can see, what we are doing actually is basically to push the edges a little bit. So now I'm overdoing it for the sake of the tutorial, but this is the before and the after. So now let's get a little bit more technical. We have a channel boolean here. In order to move the alpha into the RGBA, as you can see, uh, I have this configuration here. Alpha foreground in the red, green, and blue, and white into the alpha. So I have solid alpha and RGBA. Now what I want to do is to create two custom filters and I want to create a Sobel filter with those um, custom filters. This is how you create a Sobel filter for the um, X and for Y. So this is the result of the two Sobel. And then you can use a channel booleans to uh, basically combine those two Sobel filters and you get something like this. Now we want to add a blur and I do have another custom tool here and th this custom tool is just created to generate a uh, ST map. As you can see in the channel tab, I have X on the red, Y on the green, zero and a solid alpha. And what I'm, what I'm doing basically is I'm uh, adding those two together. So this is basically my result. And now what I can do is to use basically a texture node to have the exact same results as I was having before. The only issue with the texture node is that you lose the alpha. So luckily we have access to the ST mapper, which is a, an awesome uh, fuse made by Jacob Donnell. And what we can do is use that instead. And as you can see now, we have been preserving the alpha and this is what we can do right in the same way with <laughs> those two nodes. I'm not suggesting you to do all this uh, to get the same result of the create bump map plus the displays, but I thought it was useful for you to understand what was going on under the hood. Right, so let's see, let's have a look at a real world uh, example. So we have our um, footage here in which I'm, of course, working in linear. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm working in ACCG to be uh, exact. And I'm reducing noise on the footage. And I created a clean plate with our clean plate node and using not one, but two uh, Delta here. I have a, an edge, um, an edge mat and a core mat. Uh, combined within this delta here and then I'm dispilling the image using my new dispiller then it's probably going to be on reactor very soon and I'm doing the edge push technique just a little bit of pushing and I'm adding back the alpha again with an alpha uh, uh, mat control and in this area here Let's go back a little bit. Uh, this is my background. Uh, and in here, uh, I'm doing a couple of operation. 
so I have my dispelled image, I have my dispelled clean plate, and I'm dividing and subtracting those two from the other. So I have this result, this result for my division and this result for my from from my subtraction, and I'm basically multiplying back to the original plate and plusing back to the original plate and I'm doing one more step so that I have only the darks from this divide multiply operation and only the brights from this plus uh, subtract and plus operation so as you can see at the end I have a pretty strong result for my key let's see the before and after As you can see, it's pretty much a one-to-one -one match. All right, uh, I think it's a wrap for me. I hope this tutorial has been uh, useful. And uh, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.